There were emotional claims that wind farms cause health problems at a Senate inquiry sitting in Ballarat and Melbourne this week. Energy companies operating in Victoria reject the claims and are warning the state government not to impose tough new restrictions. It's a delicate situation for the coalition. Wind farms are crucial to the government meeting its 20% renewable energy target by 2020. Cheryl Hall reports. It's very disturbing. Farmers Carl and Samantha Stepnell gave emotional evidence before the Senate inquiry into wind farms in Ballarat this week. Uh, started with the headaches and the tingling in the head um, and then eventually the sleepless waking up at two or three in the morning and not being able to go back to sleep uh, and then eventually heart palpitations um, which, which were a massive concern. But just the pressure of my ears and my head and the nausea and just the whole thing, the sleepless nights, it just it's completely destroyed what we had on our farm. Um, it's turned our whole life upside down. The hardest decision we've ever made was to walk away from our family home um, and take our younger son, Josh, out of Bourbon Primary School to, and to leave his friends. Warbra, north of Ballarat, is Australia's largest wind farm and the source of complaints that began nearly two years ago that wind turbines cause health problems for the people living near them. Trish Godfrey is the most high-profile case of so-called Warbra disease. It feels like my head is in a vice. I can't remember the last night that I had a full night's sleep. Um, usually we wake up at least five or six times during the night. Her property was eventually bought by wind farm company Axiona. She has moved away from the turbines to Avoca, where she runs a cafe. We sleep at night. We haven't got the headaches. We haven't got the nausea. We haven't got the ringing in our ears. Um, we haven't got the depression. Um, you know, life is uh, back to normal again. Since Trish Godfrey's case, South Australian doctor Sarah Laurie has become one of the few doctors in Australia who publicly link turbines and health problems. They're getting these episodes of high blood pressure and they are occurring when the turbines are operating. We don't understand exactly what the mechanism is. However, we suspect that the pulsatile infrasound which wind turbines are emitting may have something to do with it. I accept that it's not proven. What I'm saying is we need to do the research. Andrew Thompson, Director of Development at Acciona Energy. Wind farm companies giving evidence at this week's Senate inquiry in Melbourne are not impressed. At Acciona, at least, we, we don't believe that there is a direct causal link. Uh, we base that on, on reputable medical advice. That is not to say that we don't think that there are legitimate health issues that people are experiencing in communities. But we do not believe that it's uh, caused in itself by, uh, by the turbines. The wind companies say Sarah Laurie is spreading fear in communities. Such inquiries do not exist in Europe. There are no ex-doctors being flown around the country to tell people they're going to get sick. Wind turbines are so prevalent and the objection, objection so few that such health concern arguments would be dismissed out of hand. Pacific Hydro says its oldest wind farm at Codrington near Portland has been operating for 10 years and has had no complaints until now. Our experience that there's never been a problem um, and until uh, you know, uh, Dr Laurie went and did some um, uh, public statements in, in Portland and now we're starting to feel, you know, a few questions from people who are concerned. When I first started out on this, I didn't want to find that there was a problem. It's made life rather uncomfortable for me here locally. I now, because of the stories that I've heard, feel such a sense of responsibility to these people who really have been ignored up till now. In contrast, just 50 kilometres away from Warborough, the small community of Dalesford has built the first community-owned wind farm in Australia. Just two turbines, erected last week, will produce enough electricity to power the town. 1,600 shareholders, about half of them locals, have funded the $13 million project. We've addressed concerns head on, uh, we've given people the evidence and I think that made all the difference to just being out there loud and proud in the main street. Over 120 times we got out there, rain, hail, shine and told people about the project. 
I'm show you this over here. Simon Holmes a court accuses what he calls extreme organisations for spreading fear about the health effects of wind turbines. I think it could, could very much have been better handled by, uh, by the companies involved, by the, uh, by the state government, by the medical authorities. But I think also a fair bit of blame needs to go towards the extreme organisations that would shut down this industry. The health complaints were dismissed by the previous Victorian Labor government, but the Bailey government is proposing the toughest conditions in Australia, a two-kilometre buffer between a wind turbine and a house. Two weeks ago, Pacific Hydro warned it would turn to friendlier states. This week, Origin cautioned the Senate inquiry against imposing onerous conditions. The government risks choking wind farm development just when Australia needs a strong pipeline of projects to meet the 2020 RET targets. If these policies are fully enacted, it will cost us thousands of jobs and billions of dollars of investment. And we would say that it's not a good look in the early 21st century for a state government to be driving industry out of the state. Certainly not industry that's based on low water use, low carbon production and, is, and an industry that's very job rich. Whatever the Senate inquiry recommends, the fight to stop wind farms will continue. Ten minutes outside of Voca, at Trish Godfrey's new home in Amphitheatre, there's another proposal for a new wind farm. I just broke down in tears. I just couldn't contain myself. You know, I was so distraught because I don't want to have to do this all over again. I wouldn't wish these on my worst enemy. So obviously I'm taking up the cudgels with Transfield now and I'll fight them every step of the way I can.